Hi everybody, I'm Dick Norris, a paleontologist at Scripps Institution of Oceanography in La Jolla, California. SIO is a department of the University of California, San Diego. Now the fundamental question in this class is how has life shaped planet Earth? Indeed, what would Earth be like if organisms never evolved here? Another basic theme is how life is revved up by geochemical cycles, erosion, the formation of minerals, and distinctive types of rock. As I will argue, Earth is truly a living planet to its very rocks, minerals, surface processes, and atmosphere. <laughs> now, although paleontology deals with dead things, <laughs> it's still a vibrant field of study with new discoveries every week. It never seems to fail that just when we think we've figured something out, and we think we have a definitive answer, some new wrinkle appears. For example, our understanding of the early Earth is exploding. It looks more and more like life got going, possibly before we even have a rock record. We are also seeing a revolution in the use of ancient DNA to reconstruct relatively recent history, such as that of human movements, the diversity of humanity, and the origins of both our domesticated animals and their wild forebears. Another revolution is in the construction of time trees based on new studies of molecular genetics of living organisms whose dates of evolution are calibrated to known events in Earth history. In the oceans, our understanding of ocean history is becoming ever more finely understood thanks to scientific ocean drilling. Thanks to those drill cores, we can now plumb the effects of asteroid impacts, of flood basalt eruptions, massive blowouts of greenhouse gases from the deep sea, the tide of change in grasslands and forests across the continents, and the comings and goings of Earth's ice caps. In short, there is so much to explore. Now, I hope this class will stretch your mind a bit. We deal with big themes about what life has done to Earth and how Earth's evolution has affected life. There's a lot of detective work in paleontology, and we will show you how the pieces fit together, and also where we have uh, big questions that remain. I love this stuff, and we'll try to convey some of that excitement to you. So, enjoy. Uh, by the way, we have three books for the class that I use in my university course uh, that are for supplementary reading. All are pretty cheap, namely 10 to 15 bucks, and they cover different parts of the class. Life on a Young Planet by Andy Knoll covers the first third of the class. Knoll addresses the first four billion years of Earth history from the dawn of microbial diversity to the appearance of animals. Your Inner Fish by Neil Shubin covers the next third. Uh, Shubin does a great job showing where vertebrates come from. He also participated in a lovely BBC production also called Your Inner Fish. The Earth After Us covers parts of both the beginning and the end of the class and addresses what the paleontological record of our time might look like. What would be recognizable and what would vanish with the ages? There are also a lot of new books appearing every day uh, reflecting the rapid pace of discovery in paleontology. I'll mention those as we go along. So with that, here we go.